Uh, Sarah, thanks for joining us on the show. Um, listen, let's start with the weekend, a tough result to take. Um, but would you silence some of the doubters with that performance? What were your overall thoughts on the game? Yeah, very disappointing um, result at the weekend. But I think considering the, I suppose, not the issues, but I suppose the injuries that we've had in our team and, you know, coaches moving to different clubs and all those things. I think we've had like five significant injuries this year and our forward coach um, and our midfield coach moved on to other clubs. So then we had a change there as well. So I think considering all the hurdles that we faced this season, we were pleased to kind of get back playing to our form and the way that we want to, the style of footy that we want to play. And I think we showed that against Western Bulldogs. And I think going into Adelaide, we were like, if we play the style of football that we want to play um, and impose ourselves on them, that we will be happy. But, you know, you're never happy with a loss, but you're happy that we played and performed to our ability. But I do think there was times in the game where we could have pinched it. And mm. um, that, so that's disappointing in the end. But yeah, I think it was there was a real belief and confidence within the group. And that's something that we've been lacking over the last couple of weeks. So I think we're building at the right time at the moment. Well, listen, you talk about injuries and, you know, you take the likes of Bree Davey or Britt Benucci out of any side in the AFLW, they're really going to struggle. Has the squad really pulled together since all those injuries have occurred? Yeah, like injuries just, they kill teams. Like they really hurt, like they hurt the individual themselves and they really hurt the group. And I suppose we're a group that are very empathetic as well. And we really have taken on the emotions of the girls as well. And it has really hurt a lot of us. Um, and you just worry for them girls as well, like long term injuries. You know that it's an athlete's worst nightmare and you just you feel so much for those girls. And um, I think the most important thing for us is making sure that those girls still feel connected within our group. And like, for instance, Brie da Davy was on the bench for us at the weekend. So that means at every rotation and every at quarter time, she was there giving out messages. So she was acting like, I suppose, a coach in one way so I think her voice and her calmness while she can't be out on the field it's important that they're still really involved because they are the glue that holds our group together as well and um, but I think it just means there's not opportunities for other girls and I think that's the pleasing thing to see is the younger girls stepping in and girls that you know you never know how well girls are going to respond until you give girls the chance to showcase what they've been doing all the time in, in training. But when they have no experience and they're so young, you know, you're obviously going to pick the older player over that. So I think to see the younger girls step up has been massive for us. And it just shows us that we do have depth in our squad. But like I said, you know, for a couple of weeks, there was, I suppose it affected our confidence, I think, as a group. And it was kind of, it ebbed and flowed. I felt like, you know, we went, we had a few really good performances and then a few really poor performances on our behalf. So I think it was just kind of up and down. I think we're starting to find our groove again now. And listen, for yourself and Ashling, you're both experienced AFLW stars now at this stage with a few seasons under your belt. Has your role had to change because of those injuries and having to set up, step up and be a bit more of a leader, perhaps? Yeah, I think when someone says you're an experienced AFL player, it's probably a statement I will never believe because I still think that I'm such a rookie of the game. And I think that's something I've tried to get my head around this year is be like, no, you actually know the game pretty well and you've been here four years now. And it is time that you step up and, you know, if I need to play in a different role, a different week, like, you know, I played half forward, play on the wing, play um, in, in the mid um, as well. So I've played in three different positions this year, which is, Normally, they just go with the Irish, we'll stick to one thing and we'll let them focus on that because otherwise we get too caught up in all the little detail because it is a, it's organised chaos, like it's a chaotic game, but there's so much of it is thought out and you try to plan for that chaos. So I think um, with that, yeah, I suppose you, we've kind of used the term in our group at the moment is that we just come together because like the likes of Brie and Brit, they're irreplaceable really in any team, but they, it's, it's important that we come together. And if you look at our, I suppose, stats as a team across the board, the last two weeks, there's a real even spread between the players. So it has showed that we've really come together and we're focusing a lot on our team acts and how we can bring each other into the game and how we can use our voice to, I suppose, encourage voice is something that's really big over here. It's, it's, you need to be really loud on the field to communicate with the girls around you. So that's been a big focus of ours the last couple of weeks. This is somebody who's caught our eye over the past few weeks to the pies and pretty much the season has been Eliza James. Um, what have you made of her rise and also her potential? 
Oh, you just love to see it. Like you love to see a young player come in and you try to get inside their head and see what's going on inside there. And I think with Eliza, it's just, she's the most refreshing girl ever. She's just so chill. She just goes out and plays footy. Like, you know, like we all did when we were a kid. She doesn't overthink anything. She, <laughs> we were sitting there before the game. We were all having a coffee and she's had this big cookie in her hand. And I was like, I was like, well, that's do you know, for the game, before the game. And she was like, yeah whatever like she's just so chill like just in everything she does and I think she just has raw talent and raw class about her and I love the way she follows up on every ball and she works so hard and she does that all the time in training as well so and um, she's been a real addition to us this year. Listen one more game uh, to go to secure that top six place uh, Richmond they've been hit and miss this season uh, but with players like Mon Conti and Katie Brennan it certainly won't be a walk in the park next weekend. No, absolutely not. You can't take any game for granted in this game. As I said, it can go either way, depending on the spirit of the group. If a team is building, you you never know really what you're going to get. It's very unpredictable and different teams play really different styles of footy. So I think we'll need to be at our absolute best next weekend. And obviously everything is on the line for us and not so much for them. So they have nothing to lose, but we have everything to lose. So it's a big week for us this week on the track. And I think it just starts from tomorrow night training and making sure that all the, de- the detail is done throughout the week and that we're prepared for Saturday. But we're excited and I think we're building really well at the moment. And tell us a little bit about off the pitch. Has life returned to Melbourne or, you know, has COVID kind of, is it a thing of the past now? Is there still some issues over there? Or what's life like in general? Life is off the pitch, you would know, Will, very quiet for me. And, um, you know, get home at nine o'clock and read a book and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Never. But no, a life in Melbourne is great. Like the social life and everything. And I think that's the biggest thing. I started putting you need to have a life as well because it, it does absolutely consume you. And the time and effort that you put into the team, into training and into the energy expense to, I suppose bring everyone together as well is a lot so it, it is like a full-time job that way so I think outside of that we Ruby and I my housemate you might have heard of Ruby before but we try to switch off a lot from that so um, life in Melbourne has been more or less I think the last two week all restrictions have kind of been lifted but with the AFL um, at the moment you know we still have to wear masks still have to do our antigen test prior to training and upload them on an app so it's still pretty strict within the AFL community but within uh, Melbourne it's you know a lot looser over the last couple of weeks. Well listen it's your fourth season I think I'm right in saying uh, it's not quite done yet but overall what does the future hold for you because you have so many fingers it seems in so many different pies a little bit of soccer here. Pardon the pun. Mile, you know yeah exactly uh, so what's what's the outlook for Sarah Rowe? Um. I'll be politically correct about this one, I suppose. But um, I think it's hard to know what the future holds for Sarah Rowe yet. Um, I suppose you always have long-term plans. And you find yourself at the moment, especially I do anyway, is that I am living between two worlds and sometimes can get caught in the middle of those worlds because you try to go home for six months and set your life up there. And then all of a sudden you're starting things, you're not finishing them. And then you're doing the same out here in Australia. So living between both worlds while it is, great and I love it and sometimes it comes at the downsides of not really being settled anywhere you go so I think for me long term I'll probably need to find a place where I either settle in Ireland or settle here and but that's probably don't know when that decision is going to come but probably sooner rather than later for me and um, I think then with obviously football and the seasons we have to figure out what way the seasons are going to align over the next um, couple of seasons I think by 2026 it'll go to full time over here as well so that'll make the decision I suppose easier in one way because you won't have the decision to go home at that point so for now I'm just going to have to kind of take it day by day and figure it out as I go but um, yeah that's I suppose down the pipeline. And listen we know there's three more teams coming in next year with the expansion Hawthorne, Essendon and Sydney Swans do you think that's going to mean that there will be more than 14 heading down under next year from Ireland? Yeah, absolutely. The Irish are doing so well out here and it's very much noted by the Aussies that they adapt really quickly to the game. Like we try to bring over other cross coders, like basketballers do quite well as well. Soccer players have done quite well too, but I think GA players overall are the the other sporting code that transitions the best. So I think they will be very much keeping their eyes peeled for all the Irish. I've chatted to just like 
after games you chat to other coaches they'd be like give us give us a few names there throw us out a few Irish names so I know that coaches are definitely looking don't know exactly who but for sure there'll be an influx of um, Irish next season and listen as we approach the finals who's the best team you've faced so far Mm, I think again it's hard to know because some of our performances have been very up and down you always go off what way a team plays against you but I think Fremantle really imposed their pressure and their physicality on us like we didn't have a second that day and again our probably the way we were playing didn't help ourselves that day but I think if I was to say probably between Fremantle, Brisbane and Adelaide are the top teams at the moment Um, but yeah Frio were probably the strongest team we've played to date. And obviously you're hoping you get into that top six and it's the hard way then to go and win the title overall. But is there confidence within this uh, Collingwood side that you can take on that title? Well, it just it just shows that like attitude and getting a bit of momentum this time of year can do a lot, and anything can happen in finals. Like as I said, we you know have have had a tough road this year with injuries and all of that. But I think that. You know, if you play a good style of footy and you work for each other and you work on your culture around that, um, anything is possible. So, you know, we do have faith in our group and I think we've been through so much setbacks and we bounce back every time and there is a real spirit and fight within this group. So I've no doubt that we'll bring that fight this Saturday and then after that, who knows, but you just take it week by week, day by day. And if you start focusing on the outcome you forget about the process and you forget to do all the little things well so you just really have to stay process focused in this game process focused i remember that (laughs) perfect (laughs) listen that is everything i think we could possibly ask of you today 